Guys, welcome back. Good friend of the show, Tony Cavallero. He's part of the Righteous Gemstones starting this Sunday on HBO. You can catch it right here in the Midwest, I believe, at uh, 1030. Tony, got the late spot. What's up, dude? How are you? Uh, I'm doing great, guys. Um, it's actually 10 p.m., dude. I oh. hate to call you out. Mm. You make you sound like a total idiot <laughs> to your entire audience. <laughs> what? Uh, no. Oh. I, I, yeah, yeah, so we got uh, 8 o'clock start in the Central. Whatever we're doing. I'm excited to have you back. Man. Is it 8 o'clock start Central? Yeah, it's 8 o'clock Central. Mm -hmm. On HBO. Mm. Well, I don't know. Now who's the dumb one? <laughs> well, Me. I like to start off every <laughs> every interview really confusing <laughs> everyone so they don't watch at the right time for this awesome show that you have coming on. Jody Hill, Danny McBride, St. Louis's own John Goodman. You're in on that. You're playing uh, you're playing a devil worshiper too with John Goodman. That's my lifelong dream. I'm jealous. Well, yeah. Guys, I'm so excited for everyone to see this show. It's so special. Like my wife and I spent four and a half months in Charleston, South Carolina, which is probably the greatest place in the world. Uh, we were living like a block from the beach and everyone there from top to bottom, we're just like, it's like a family atmosphere. Wow. Like it'd be like, let's all go to Danny's house to watch Game of Thrones. Uh, we're all gonna go out on the boat this weekend to just cruise around, you know, Charleston Harbor. Um, Let's all head to the beach. We're going to meet at Station 18 on Sullivan's Island at 2 o'clock. I mean, it, it was just a total dream come true. And, you know, for me, and I'm sure you guys too, you know, I grew up watching John Goodman. I remember, you know, when I was first moved to L.A., I remember I would go to my dad's place because I, um, I lived in a shithole in Hollywood. And so I would go to my dad's place on Sunday nights and they would do dinner with my dad and my stepmom. And then after that, I would go in their back room and bored to death and then Eastbound would play. Nice, yeah. And I was just blown away by that style of comedy. And I'd never seen, you know, anything like that before, really. Speaking and, of yeah, that- To get to work with these guys. No, that's what I was going to say. Like, Danny has a very unique style. We've seen, of course, with Vice, uh, Vice Principals and, of course, Eastbound and Down. So how did you prepare for this particular role, knowing that he's kind of, you know, he's very, of course, into improv, letting the actors get into their own characters? How, did that, how, did, how was that adjustment for you? Well, I'm super excited for people to see uh, my character in this because... As you guys know, usually my characters are really high energy, you know, keyed up, ready to go, you know, as you saw with Dewey Finn and School of Rock. And right. if anyone's seen me at the Brown Lines, and even with Ozzy, you know, it's wily I'm, eyes I'm, kind of. I'm still shook <laughs> from Ozzy. That's my guy up there. From Ozzy, the right? That was <laughs> the most fun. How many children are ever. scarred from that that saw you at School of Rock and then saw you as Ozzy? Well, dude. So, dude, we're shooting that scene. I'm in a dress and a, and a cock sock. And I'm on the pool and, like, two little kids are in the pool. And they're like, you Mr. Finn from School of Rock. God, uh... Two extras in the pool. Yes. <laughs> and, like, there's deleted scenes where, like, my whole, like, entire taint was just in full vision of these children. To say they were tainted wouldn't be a lie. That's why we love him. It's Tony Cavallaro. I wish we could enter in, in the interview there because it's not going to get any better. <laughs> it's no, good. it's not. I don't possess well, the skills to bring out anything better. That's amazing. You tainted those kids. Oh. I wouldn't worry about not getting more taint because you're going to get Plenty of me and plenty of Keith, body-wise, in oh, wow. uh, the Righteous Gemstones. So, stay tuned. <laughs> um, but you guys will see on Sunday night, everyone tune in. My character, I am like this ex-Satanist who's been saved by Adam Devine's character. Um, and we are best friends. Um, <laughs> I'll keep it at that. I live... 
I live in his pool house. This, this is already good money. Is this why you guys have been oh. seeing each other out and about so much? This is outstanding. And uh, I'm just a weird guy who, like, he's he's gone from this world of, like, Satan worshiping and techno clubs to now entering the Gemstone family, which is, like, televangelist, evangelical, Joel Osteen, you know, Christian, this whole world. And it's like, he would have trouble enough functioning in a regular society, let alone going from one side of the spectrum, right. literally from Satan to now Jesus. This guy doesn't know how to function. I mean, physically, verbally, and uh, he's very, he's low key, very eccentric. I'm, I'm really excited for people to see the show and Keith gets to pop in here and there and have some real fun moments. But I mean, just dream cast, dream bosses. The show goes totally bananas. I mean, Walton Goggins character is insane. <laughs> like, I mean, it's literally, it's like, it's like they took Eastbound and they took vice principals production wise and put it on steroids. I mean, wow. the pilot feels like it's a feature film and I think it's close to an hour long. So you guys will see what I'm talking about when you, when you get to watch it. It's, it's epic. I mean, 50,000 person mega church and private jets and four white, you know, G wagons. And I, I mean, they went all out to create this world, which I'm really excited for people to see. Well, and of course, just the subject matter itself, like I find that to be so interesting. You grew up on the East Coast, correct? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, and maybe uh, Virginia, some... Northern Virginia. Okay, so so maybe there's some Southernness tinged into there, but anytime you explore that world of, of televangelism, show, get your dog on the screen too. I need <laughs> if you have a dog in the room. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Uh, I've got three dogs in the room. Oh yeah, what's up, puppy? Anytime you get to explore. <laughs> That's <what I> see. <laughs> Who wore it better? You guys are rocking the same. Nice. <laughs> so perfect. Dude, anytime you get to explore these worlds of like manipulation and and then you're mixing in just the decadence that comes with some of these Joel Osteen type of people, was that exactly? Was that, and I know it's funny and I know it's absolutely absurd and ridiculous, but does it does it sicken you a little bit because it is based off of of real stuff that happened? Well, for me, I mean, you, you'll see in the show, and I think even recently, like one of those big mega church guys was like totally caught by surprise after an interview. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's yeah. so funny. I mean, it's like literally one of the characters from the show. He's talking to the reporter that's a female and he's like, listen here, honey, you don't catch me here, but I have done and I love the Lord. <laughs> And I'm here to practice it. But don't you ever do this again. But I see there's the devil. And he pops out. You know what I mean? Like, this is like, it's real. And, and, yes. and there's even an interview with this, um, there's this interview with this uh, black pastor. And it's like some kind of an IRS something uh, interview where they're like, so... You took a private jet to New York and you bought 15 Gucci suits. And he's like, yes, I did. I need to look presentable on my television show. And it's like 15 Gucci suits. And then they're like, you have an $8 million mansion. Uh, what's that for? Well, that's part of my re research and worship center. And, <laughs> you know, this whole world... I mean, you know, and if you haven't Googled that clip, you have to Google that amazing. interview. He gets so angry the entire interview. Um, but this whole world, like as soon as I saw, so my, my wife was writing with a friend of hers and that friend is also an actress and she showed up and she had just auditioned to play uh, Danny's wife on the show. And she told my wife a little bit about it. And, and then she told me about it and I was like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Um, and then it became like her quest 
to get me an audition for the show. That's awesome. And I was like, my agent's got it, my agent's got it. <laughs> and we kept pressing and pressing and pressing and finally they saw me. Um, but originally that breakdown for the part I ended up getting was like uh, a man in his 40s who's like very heavy and overweight. And I was like, I'm never gonna get this. So I just <laughs> made a big choice and I don't know how, I don't, I mean, it was just like seriously a dream come true. Cause like, so Danny McBride already like shines in this Southern world. Yes. And I've always been like, I mean, as soon as that idea came out, I was like, of course, right. This is like perfect for every character he plays to live in this, in this world of the Southern televangelical South, you know, like, it's like, oh yeah, why not? And then of course, Edie Patterson, uh, who's on the show as well, who plays Judy Gemstone, the sister. She's a good buddy of mine. We're both in the Groundlings together. Tim Baltz, who plays her fiance on the show. Him and I did Montreal together back in 2012. So we've been buds for a long time. Adam and I have worked together multiple times. So it's just like, I mean, synchronicity and the way everything lined up. And to get to follow up a kid show like that, like, like School of Rock with Ozzy and then this, like, what a dream scenario, you know? What has your life been like since? Because yeah, you talk about, of course, your work you did for School of Rock, but now you've done the Ozzy, now you're doing this. This is obviously, just looking at the cast alone and the type of promotion, of course, HBO is putting behind this series, you're gonna be seen again by an even larger audience. So for you right now, how has that transition been? been? Because you're, you're, you're pretty damn close, my friend, or as close as it's, uh, it's ever been, I would imagine, for your career. This is a pretty impressive run you're on. I, I mean, again, guys, I, I, you know, I just, like, my, my, my wife helped me out with both of these auditions. And I think for me, it was really, you know, with the Aussie one and with uh, Gemstones, it was just kind of going in and making big choices, really, with both of them. I mean, I made big character choices. I've never done an Ozzy Osbourne impression in my life. <laughs> and I was just like, ever. Like, I was like, okay, honey, I'm going to put on one of your dresses and put on some under-eye makeup and be a maniac and show my ass in this audition. And we'll see what happens. And it was kind of the same thing. We, like, workshopped and... That's awesome. And, uh, you know used like pieces of this old YouTube character I did back in the day with pieces of this old Groundlings character I did back in the day and kind of combined them and, and that's how Keith happened. But like career-wise, I mean, just to get super real, I mean, School of Rock ended, I got the Aussie part and then I was like in my first pilot season I had been in in five years because I had School of Rock going, so I hadn't done one, but I was like, oh, this will be great, um, you know, I've had experience on a show and it'll be awesome. And then like Ozzy Osbourne, the announcement came out in the middle of pilot season. And I was like, yes, this is gonna give me that extra boost and nothing, <laughs> rickets. And I was like, you know, going from making TV money right. to back to making, like I only worked one day on the dirt. I mean, oh, wow. I made a day yeah. rate so quick one day, Oh wow! you know, so it's like, it was an awesome part, but I mean, you know, I, I don't even remember what it was, but like at the, at the halfway point of that year, I, I had made like $3,000 right. and I was like, okay, this is getting pretty real. <laughs> um, I, I'm like... <laughs> now, are you like, saying hey, that, mom, or is that the wife uh, saying that, oh, it's getting yeah. real? Who actually said, oh, it's getting real? Oh, I, I was saying it. She <laughs> was cool, calm, and collected the whole time. She's like, you always work. Shut up. You're going to be fine. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I've got this mullet. I think I should shave my head. I think I should shave my head. <laughs> you I mean, I was for of... real, like, <laughs> contemplating... Like, what do I do? What do I do? And then this came out of nowhere. That's and it was like, okay, cool. And, and another, like, clear evidence, just trust the process, stay positive, persevere, keep doing the work. That's the thing, like, 
we were creating two different TV shows, a podcast. I was performing at the Groundlings. Like, That's awesome. you know, you just can't stop, you know, once you stop. And even when you're making stuff, you can't stop. You know, that doesn't mean you don't take some good R and R. It's just, you know, creatively these days with how everything moves so fast, you know, I think you always kind of have to have your creative juices flowing. And for me, that's hopefully directing, writing, producing, you know, putting up a podcast. I mean, everything, you know, from top to bottom. And that's, you know, kind of been a learning experience for me and continues to be. How have, you know. learned to, how have you learned to balance that? Because I've been very curious about a lot of these artists, like especially a lot of comedians that are constantly working, constantly trying to put out content, because as you mentioned, in order for you to survive in this business, you have to always be working. But how do you guys find time to manage that R&R? &R? How do you manage to be a husband? How do you manage to do some things that are outside of your field? How do you guys, because I feel like there are moments where you, you feel like you have to be working because if you're not working, then obviously you're not honoring your craft at the same time, man, you get burned out. You get to a moment where you're just like, I've seen more than my fair share of scripts. I put together more than my auditions. Like I just need to be a human being. Exactly. For us, you know, uh, I mean, to be totally honest, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm a long time sober. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I, I, I'm luckily I got a program that, that really balances me out from, awesome. from doing that. Uh, which I'm really blessed to have, but also like, I am like, I like a tight schedule. I like all lots of things going on. So me, I'm, I'm kind of a work in progress with that. Okay. Um, what I found recently is, you know, uh, not recently, but Annie's really into reading books and I've gone kind of back and forth on that, but I've gotten really into reading books. And for me, you know, it's, it's having kind of like clear set goals mm -hmm. and not just not being too tied to those goals. Cause the thing is, it's if you get too frantic and too stressed, then you're not going to be able to be of service to anyone, let alone okay. yourself. So for me, it's kind of like, if I find myself in that place of like, I've got to get this done right now, it means, Hey, maybe you should pump the brakes a little bit. And, um, you know, for, unfortunately for us, it's been kind of pumping the brakes on, let's go out to dinner with this friend or let's do that. Right, like, right. I mean, since we've been back from Charleston, it's been, um, we've been like real homebodies working on some of our own projects, but also just taking the time to be together and hang out and, you know, go to, uh, there's some cool outdoor markets with like <laughs> festival food on Sundays. Right. So just learning oh, that Tony. domestic life, you know? Oh, right. Tony. Uh, this is going to be a tough one because I don't know who you shoot your scenes with. Of the people on The Righteous Gemstones, did anyone, and again, to Walton Goggins, like, I, how many Oscars are on that? But how, who, who made you laugh or surprised you the most? Uh, and you didn't necessarily have to be a scene. Just being on set, did anyone surprise you? That's, I mean, that's a killer list of actors slash people that are funny. Who was the funniest person that you saw on set? Ooh. I mean, that's a tough one. So I don't have too many scenes with the core group of sure. folks. Just a lot so of a that. lot of it was just Adam and I. Yeah. Um, but you guys, the thing that's tough is that there's so many dark moments. But you'll see, uh, I mean, really, there's like some, it's like the show crosses genres like it's i feel like it's for sure the most dramatic and dark that danny and jody and, and david have ever done Interesting. and but i mean there was one scene in particular where it was Edie, adam danny and i and you'll see it's one of the cold opens and it none of us could keep a straight face but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm giddy. I'm giddy. Me too. It. It's gonna be so. It, yeah, I, I know. The, the thing tone. is, is that like everybody just, yeah, we're still everybody excited brings we were... such a unique, right. That's what we got. Let's that's why keep we got... messing with this delay. <laughs> no, this delay is just awful. It's great for comedic timing, right. for sure. No, we, Chris and I, we, we completely geeked out when we saw the premise because we've been like most of the people our age certainly are huge Danny McBride fans. And we just thought the premise was brilliant. I just the liked fact the that nastiness. it was on HBO was brilliant. The nastiness behind that whole industry. Oh, of I grew course. up Catholic, so that's a whole different thing. But then at the same time, 
uh, just the, the whole, it's just so gross. And you take advantage of people at their weakest because they're giving you, they're bearing their soul to right. you. And then you're like, yeah, empty that uh, wall yeah. there, Steve. Uh, but it, that's, we literally were like pumped about the premise. And then to know that you got added to that, like there's that wow. personal connection. We were just, oh, we're always rooting for you. And it, it's not, to, you're literally on a, a, a series on a major cable network. So there was, it's not like you're the little engine that could. But you're you're a guy that's gonna continue. Your star is gonna keep growing, and then just for you to latch in, it felt so perfect for you to join that crew because those guys what met in film school uh, when they were in college. Like it, yeah, dude, it's one of those yeah. things that it just felt like such a great fit. Oh, that's so sweet, you guys. And <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I, as soon as you reached out, I was like, I was like, I, I'd love to chat with you guys and talk to you all about it. And for sure, man, it was like. It's so funny, like you say that. Th didn't they all go to college together? I mean, it goes so much deeper than you think. Like, out of everyone that works on the show, it's like David, Jody, Danny, our sound guy, the set decorator, the location scout, one of the editors, like four of the, of the writers. There's like 15 guys that all went to college together. That's insane. At the North Carolina School of the Arts. And they all still work together. And, and that's what I mean. It's like everybody's so happy to show up for work and to be a part of this thing. And just Charleston in general as a community. Mm -hmm. Everybody is so excited to have filming there and people there. And, you know, it, it was just a, a really special experience. And I just can't believe it's going to be coming out in just a couple of days. On Sunday on HBO, and we, and you know, that's another thing too. We're talking about all the goodness. We haven't even talked. Adam Devine, Travis, uh, I want to say, has done a bunch with Big Slick, which uh, our business partner does with like Rob Riggle and uh, Sadakis and Paul Rudd and everything. All we've heard is that he's the best guy ever, <laughs> and it just it makes so much sense that even at the highest levels, character matters, talent matters. It's it's just a cool yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean. We like became total like buds out there. We had known each other and kind of, cause he's, he, he had gone through uh, some of the Groundlings classes and then actually right before Workaholics came out, I was in a sketch group, an improv group called Robert Downey Jr. Jr. And we used to do these shows on Saturday nights and we'd have one standup come. And one of the members of our improv group was Josh McDermott who plays Eugene on uh, The Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah one of my best buds and he was friends with Adam. So Adam came and he was our stand-up guest. And uh, I remember asking Josh, hey, what's this guy's deal? And he's like, oh, he, I know him through the stand-up community. He's got this new show coming out on Comedy Central called Workaholics. And then like three months later, dude, Workaholics hit. And it was, it was a huge hit. And then I worked with him on his show, Adam Devine's House Party. And then we worked together again on, um, on uh, when we first met on Netflix. And then I remember when I first heard, the casting director first told me that he was gonna be playing the little brother and my best friend on the show. I texted him out of nowhere. And remember, I told you that character description was, you know, forties overweight guy. So when I was like, hey dude, uh, a little bird told me something about you. And he was like, what's up? And I was like, are you going to be on the Righteous Gemstones? And he was like, hell yeah. And I was like, well, I'm going to be your best friend on the show. And he was like, really? Question mark. <laughs> and because like forever, man, I had always, there was a, a time period where my hair was short and I would walk into audition rooms and they'd be like, you're like that guy on Workaholics or you, you've got a comedic style that's like that guy on Workaholics. And you know, we were more kindred spirits than I think either of us thought growing up being huge Chris Farley fans and that's awesome. we're both like really dumb meathead jocks that love to work out. So it'd be like, you know, we were living on the same Island and, and he would call me up and be like, I'm going to work out in 20 minutes. And I get on my golf cart because you only drive golf carts on Sullivan's of Island. Course. Yeah. And I'd put my like two dumbbells in the golf cart. And then we would, I'd golf cart over to his house and like, we'd both do a half hour workout shirtless in his backyard. And, like, <laughs> blasting Metallica. <laughs> That's outstanding. I don't know if it gets any better than that. So Righteous Gemstones it doesn't. coming out this Sunday. 
Tony Cavallaro is uh, he's Adam Devine's special buddy on that. Is that is that the official yeah. title? Yeah, of I like special buddy. Special buddy works <laughs> yeah. for me. Uh, Tony, we got We'll have to get you back on again, man. It's it's always a pleasure. Congratulations, You're so talented. Man. Congratulations on everything, man. So pumped for you. You look great, man. Take care of yourself. Thank you, guys. Hey, I know. Me, let me see those sunglasses. <laughs> let me see those sunglasses. <laughs> Maybe you can flex on us. Oh, look Looking at him. like the look ultimate look warrior. Got that, hey, Chris, he got that HBO money now. Oh, I see. He, he got, the, got the brand. Oh, wow. He got the brand oh, posters wow. now. Oh, look at yeah. him. Boy, I tell you. Nickelodeon. Long bicep, long. short oh. bicep. Long <laughs> bicep, short bicep. <laughs> well, we'll watch Bryce's oh, You guys no. got to see oh, these calves. Oh, God. Look at his glue. Oh, look at those calves. That's kind of scary. Oh, calves. Oh, that's, that's scary good. That's amazing. Okay, well, we're really proud Hold of you. Hold on, guys. I'll give you the whole package. Oh, he's giving us the thighs, too! I thought he's preparing for a Marvel role. Hey, that's think, what he's doing. Is there another WWE biopic <laughs> coming out? That <laughs> Someone's going to play Ultimate Warrior in the biopic. I'm, dude, I will take so many steroids just to play <laughs> the Ultimate Warrior. Please. I Please, dear God. perfect for the job. <laughs> Outstanding. Oh, see you I later, mean, buddy. You're the best. I hey, show what? you my glutes, but yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll see enough of those unrighteous gemstones if I think <laughs> of what's going to happen. Oh, yep, possibly. That'll cover it. Tony, <laughs> real quick, how do we check out the podcast? Uh, well, it's not out yet, but okay. just stay tuned to all my social media channels. I'm Tony Cavallaro on everything: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Follow me there. It'll be out probably in the next month. So check Perfect. it out. Perfect. Awesome. Tony Cavallaro, Righteous Gemstones, Sunday on HBO. Thanks, buddy. Take care, brother.